The very first thing we want to do when we bring a new picture into Photoshop is take care of the contrast. Get the contrast right and you're three quarters of the way to get a good picture. Now instead of using the brightness and contrast controls which are a little bit hit and miss, we're going to have a look at a much more precise way of doing it with the levels palette. Uh, now if you look at the picture here, it's a rather dull, lifeless affair. And looking over here at the histogram, the graph here, you can see why, because the top half of the graph is completely empty. There are no pixels above about mid-gray and very few down in the shadow area. So what we've got to do is to take our bunch of pixels, our bunch of values, and uh, spread them out over the whole gamut. We've got black here, which is represented by zero, and white, which is 255. So there are 255 steps, or 256 steps, to this uh, scale, and we're using about half of them. So the way to do this is to grab hold of the white fader here and move the white point uh, down to the first pixels that we have any information on. Now if we look at the picture here, it's got a lot lighter, uh, but it's got a light, lighter, uh, not just lighter, but more contrast. Um, and looking at the light area here, we still have nice gradation between the clouds. If we push the white point even further, then what we've actually done is to make all these pixels from here to here white, uh, instead of having all different values as they had before. And if you look at the picture now, we have a great big chunk of pure white. So down to there, we've not lost any information. We've not lost, when I say information, I mean differential between one pixel and another hasn't changed. Uh, whereas if we push it there, then we're, we're blocking the white. The only time you'd actually want to do this is if you maybe had a white background in a studio portrait and you wanted to make sure that it was white all over, then you might nip off the, the, the top of the graph here. But for this sort of picture, no, we want to keep it right there. Now we can do exactly the same with the black end because there are no pure blacks here um, and there's nothing for about 15, 16 levels. So we can push the fader in until we get to the edge of our information. Once again, if I push it too far, everything gets a bit blocky and much too contrasty as well as you can see. So now we have the ends of our picture specified at uh, 15 and 158 uh, and then if I was to press that to accept that then the graph would spread itself over the whole area and we would get a picture that looks very similar to this but there's more in the middle here you can see a gray fader and this represents the midpoint of the levels if I move the white fader again you can see the gray one moves with it. Uh, so it always hovers around the midpoint. So as as the contrast changes, the midpoint changes as well. And this value remains at 1 all the time, if I do that again. Now if I move the grey fader on its own, I am moving the mid-grey point. If I move it to the left, the picture gets lighter, less contrasty, and if I move it to the right past one, then uh, the picture will become more contrasty and darker. Now, in this particular picture, I think that that is still a bit too wishy-washy. So we're going to push it across to about 90, which gives us a nice punctual picture. So a very, very simple adjustment, but also a very precise adjustment. We haven't lost any information. We haven't created any blank spots at all, any white spots. And you can see if I undo the preview and redo the preview that we have in fact made a world of difference uh, to this picture. Okay, so there you go. And if I open the uh, levels palette again, 
then you can see what's happened to the graph. The graph has now spread right across. Now, this isn't a free lunch, unfortunately. You'll see that there are gaps in between the, the black bits. So what we've done, we've taken those levels and we've expanded them across the full range. And now we have banding between. Uh, so if this was a very plain uh, background of some sort, we would perhaps see some lines. But on a photograph, because there's so much going on, so much detail, you really don't see the banding at this sort of level. Um, if, if the banding was uh, more, then perhaps it would start to appear in the photograph. So it would still be better to get the exposure right in the camera. I mean, this is basically the reason why this was so dull was because it was underexposed. But you can, with using the levels, save the picture quite a lot. And normally, of course, uh, you wouldn't be making such a huge adjustment as I've made in this picture. So there you go. A very easy adjustment to make and made a, made a very dramatic difference to the picture.